Alexander had just won his first stunning victory over the Persian Empire at the Battle of the Granicus River. But with news of a real threat in the west, the Persian High King Darius would begin raising his army and preparing to march to meet Alexander, a fight which would ultimately decide the fate of the Persian Empire. Following Alexander's victory, the Persians would surrender the provincial capital and the treasury of Sardis, giving Alexander control over much of Hellespontine Phrygia. Alexander would then proceed along the Ionian coast, liberating cities from Persian control. Alexander would soon come upon the coastal cities of Miletus and Holoconarsus, which both housed parts of the much superior Persian fleet which threatened his communication back to Greece. Nicanor, Parmenian's son, would soon begin the delicate siege of Miletus, while further south at Holoconarsus, Alexander waged his first full-scale siege, eventually forcing his opponents, the mercenary captain Memnon of Rhodes and the Persian satrap of Caria, to withdraw by sea. And by the winter of 334, both cities had fallen. The force from Holoconarsus under the command of Memnon of Rhodes would begin a campaign to capture the Aegean islands using the Persian fleet. Memnon managed to capture the islands of Chios and most of Lesbos, but luckily for Alexander, Memnon died shortly after, ending his campaign. From Holoconarsus, Alexander proceeded into the mountainous Lycinian plain asserting control over the coastal cities, attempting to deny the Persians' naval bases in the Mediterranean. From Pamphylia onwards, the coast held no major ports, and Alexander moved inland. At the ancient Phrygian capital of Gordium, Alexander undid the unsolvable Gordian knot by hacking it apart with his sword, a feat said to await the future king of Asia. In spring 333 BC, Alexander crossed the Taurus into Cilicia. After a long pause due to an illness, he marched on towards Syria. Though the emergence of Darius' significantly larger army was unbeknownst to him, until it was too late. Alexander would attempt to march back to Cilicia, but he had been outmaneuvered and would be forced to fight Darius at the Battle of Issus. The vastly superior Persian army would number a some 100,000 compared to the Greeks' 40,000 men. Though the terrain would prevent Darius from exploiting his superiority, as the distance from the surrounding mountains to the water was no more than two miles. Alexander led his companion cavalry on the right flank, and he set his Thessalian cavalry on the left flank of the phalanx with Parmenian in command. Darius formed his line with his heavy cavalry concentrated next to the coast, where the ground was best for cavalry, followed by the Greek mercenary phalanx, and on his left, Darius spread his Persian infantry. The superior elite Persian cavalry charged Parmenian on the left flank, crossing the river to open the battle. Following this, the Macedonian phalanx began its advance across the river and up the fortified bank, into the waiting arms of the Greek mercenaries waiting for them on the other side. On the left flank, the Thessalian cavalry were struggling, fighting against the superior mass of Persian heavy horses that delivered charge after charge. Alexander, realizing action needed to be made, personally led his Ipaspis on foot against the Persian left flank delivering a decisive blow, managing to punch a hole through the Persian line. Alexander then mounted his horse and led his companion cavalry in a direct assault against Darius and his bodyguards, causing them to flee the battlefield. However, Alexander, realizing the dire state of his left flank and center, allowed Darius to flee and regrouped his cavalry before crashing into the rear of the Greek mercenaries. Once the Persians realized the dire state of the battle, and that their great king had retreated, they abandoned their positions and fled in full rout. The Hellenic cavalry pursued the fleeing Persians for as long as there was light, 
inflicting significant carnage after the battle. Ptolemy mentions that while pursuing Darius, Alexander and his bodyguards came upon a ravine which they easily crossed on the piled up bodies of dead Persians. The victory for Alexander was decisive. In Darius's haste, he had left behind his wife, his two daughters, his mother and part of his treasury, which was all captured by Alexander. Darius offered a peace treaty that included the lands he had already lost and a ransom of 10,000 talents for his family. Alexander replied that since he was now king of Asia, it was he alone who would decide territorial divisions. Alexander proceeded to march down the coast, taking possession of Syria and most of the coast of the Levant. In the following year, 332 BC, he attacked Tyre a well-fortified island city off the coast. Alexander would build a land bridge stretching out to the island, and after the arrival of his newly captured Persian navy, him and his troops would make landfall and easily overpower the garrison, ending the long and difficult siege. The citizens who took shelter in the temple were pardoned by Alexander, including the king of Tyre. The remaining inhabitants, some 30,000 people, were killed or sold into slavery. When the news of Alexander's capture and subsequent destruction of Tyre spread, most of the towns on the route to Egypt quickly capitulated. Until Alexander met the stronghold of Gaza, the last thing between him and Egypt. The stronghold was heavily fortified and built on a hill. When his engineers pointed out to him that because of the height of the mound, it would be impossible. This encouraged Alexander all the more to make an attempt. After three unsuccessful assaults, the stronghold finally fell, as entire men of military age were put to the sword and women and children were sold into slavery. Alexander now entered the vast Egyptian delta, arriving at Pelusium where the Persian governor of Egypt would surrender the entire province to the Greeks. At Memphis, the people welcomed him as a liberator and crowned him pharaoh. At the mouth of the Nile, Alexander would found the city of Alexandria. He then traveled to Siwa, where the priests welcomed him and proclaimed him son of Amun, king of the gods. Leaving Egypt in 331 BC, Alexander marched eastward into Achaemenid Assyria in Upper Mesopotamia, where he would receive another offer from Darius, offering him all of the territory west of the Euphrates, co-rulership of the Achaemenid Empire, and the hand of one of his daughters in 30,000 talents of silver. In the account of Diodorus, Alexander explicitly deliberated this offer with his friends. Alexander in the end refused the offer of Darius, and insisted that there could only be one king of Asia. Once Alexander received word Darius had gathered another army and was waiting for him at Gagamela, Alexander would march right for him, determined to crush him once and for all. When Alexander arrived, the Persians had already been present on the battlefield for days. They had deployed scythe chariots for which Darius had ordered the land flattened and bushes and vegetation removed from the battlefield to maximize their effectiveness. The Macedonians were also decisively outnumbered, maybe as much as two to one. Darius placed himself in the center with his best infantry. On both flanks were the cavalry. Chariots were placed in front. While the Macedonians formed up normally, the right side under the direct command of Alexander and the left under Parmenion. Alexander began by ordering his infantry to march in phalanx formation towards the center of the enemy line. The Macedonians advanced with the wings eclonged back at 45 degrees to lure the Persian cavalry to attack. Meanwhile, Alexander began moving his companion cavalry to the right and around the Persian left flank. In response, Darius moved the cavalry from his center and left to attack Alexander, while also moving his right flank to attack the Greek left. Darius now launched his chariots at Alexander's army, 
Many of the chariots were intercepted by the Agrianes and other javelin throwers. The chariots who made it through the barrage of javelins charged the Macedonian lines, which responded by opening up their ranks, creating alleys through which the chariots passed harmlessly. As the Persians advanced further and further on the Greek flanks in their attack, Alexander disengaged his companions, prepared for the decisive attack. He formed his units into a giant wedge, with him leading the charge. This large wedge then smashed into the weakened Persian center, taking Darius's royal guard and the Greek mercenaries. Darius, in danger of being cut off, now broke and ran with the rest of his center following him. Alexander could have pursued Darius at this point, however he received desperate messages from Parmenion on the left flank. Parmenion's wing was encircled by the cavalry of the Persian right wing. Alexander was forced to give up his pursuit of Darius and help Parmenion. What happened next was described by Arian as the fiercest engagement of the battle, as Alexander and his companions encountered the cavalry of the Persian right eventually breaking them, however not without losses. Alexander then began in advance to Babylon, where he was recognized as King of Kings, before continuing on to Susa. He then sent the bulk of his army to the Persian ceremonial capital of Persepolis, via the Persian royal road. Alexander himself took selected troops on the direct route to the city, he then stormed the pass of the Persian gates, which had been blocked by the Persian army. On entering Persepolis, Alexander allowed his troops to loot the city for days. Alexander stayed in Persepolis for five months. During his stay, a fire broke out in the eastern palace of Xerxes I and spread to the rest of the city. Alexander then marched on Ecbana and chased Darius first into Media and then Parthia, though the Persian king no longer controlled his own destiny, as he was taken prisoner by Bessus, his Bactrian satrap. As Alexander approached, Bessus killed the great king, and then declared himself Darius' successor before retreating into Central Asia to launch a guerrilla campaign against Alexander. Alexander would bury Darius' remains next to his Achaemenid predecessors in a regal funeral. The Achaemenid Empire is normally considered to have fallen with Darius.